Hello, this is Miss Friedel, and today we're going to talk about ecology. We're here in this beautiful South Florida butterfly garden, and we're going to first start off with going to the vocabulary words that I'll be explaining today. So what is ecology? Ecology is that branch of biology that deals with the relations of organisms to one another and to their physical surroundings. Vocabulary we're going to be studying today is interdependence, the food chain, and the food web. Producer, consumer, decomposer, herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, primary, secondary, tertiary consumers, the energy pyramid, and an ecosystem, of course. How does that differ from a habitat? Who's the predator? Who's the prey? What kind of relationships do they have? Are they symbiotic relationships of parasitism, commensalism, mutualism? Is there competition? What are the limiting factors? What's a native population as opposed to an invasive species? How does an organism fit into an entire biome in our biosphere? What is the carrying capacity? How much can it actually support? So we're gonna be using this beautiful South Florida butterfly garden to talk about these words and learn a lot more about ecology. So we are here in a butterfly garden, which is the habitat for native species of this particular area. Now think of a habitat as the home of the organisms and the ecosystem as its neighborhood. Here in this particular butterfly garden, we are full of native plants. Native meaning they belong in that particular ecosystem. They are not considered invasive. Invasive species are those organisms that don't belong here. The iguanas in your backyard, those pythons in the Everglades, the lionfish on the coral reef, those are invasive, they do not belong here. But our native plants and animals that are here in this particular butterfly garden, they are native to South Florida. There's an interdependence between them. We have the butterflies who were once caterpillars who live on the particular plants. The caterpillars, are dependent on their host plant for their food. The butterflies, of course, become from the caterpillars, so they in turn are also dependent on those plants for food. When they become butterflies, they have different flowers of which they take the nectar in. They're dependent on that. So there's an interdependence between all the different organisms. There's a food chain. We start with our producers, all of our green plants, photosynthesis, they take in the sun, the carbon dioxide, the water. They make that food in the process of photosynthesis, and we have our producers, the bottom of the food chain. After that, we have our primary consumers. Those would be all of those different animals, insects, butterflies, birds, that eat the producers. So in this habitat, we have producers, all the green plants, we have the consumers, everything that eats the plants, and we have the decomposers, the mushrooms, the bacteria that take those waste and break them down in the soil and become the nitrogen and the carbon and we go through all of those cycles of life. We have herbivores, those animals which only eat plants like the rabbit. We have the carnivores which are like mockingbirds. Mockingbirds like to eat worms and bugs and, and other different insects. And we have the omnivore which is ducks. Ducks eat plants, they eat worms, they eat fish, they'll eat all of that. So herbivores, carnivores, omnivores, producers, consumers, decomposers. They all make up the entire food web. And when we look at it as a chain, we have the food chain. There's an interdependence amongst all life in our ecosystem. So within any ecosystem, we have biotic and abiotic factors. What are they? Biotic is everything that's living. It would be the butterflies. It would be all of the animals, the insects, the birds, and it would be all the plants. Biotic, the word bio, meaning biology. Then we have the abiotic factors, non-living. We have the rocks, the earth, the water, the air. Those are our abiotic factors. We need both of these to make a successful ecosystem. And within this ecosystem, we have energy pyramids. What's an energy pyramid? Well, we start with our producers. They get the energy from the sun, they make their food, then we have the animals that eat the plants, like my little rabbit over here. Little rabbit's an herbivore. He eats the plants. Then we might have a hawk come down, or in other ecosystems, a larger predator that would eat him. At the very top of the energy pyramid, we have our tertiary consumers. 
and those would be our large, our lions, our bears, and hawks. So we have our primary, secondary, what would eat them, and our tertiary, which is top of the energy pyramid. Energy is less as you go up the pyramid, so the majority of energy is at the bottom. This is why those at the top have to eat more. What's a predator? That which is the animal which seeks its prey. Poor little bunny rabbit here is a prey. Predators, lions, tigers, bears, oh my, and the hawks and the eagles and the owls, the polar bears, all of those large predators that we've been known about ever since we were kids. The prey, of course, that which they hunt. Can an animal be both predator and prey? Absolutely, especially in the ocean. We have the big fish, which eats the little fish, which a bigger fish eats him. There's competition. There has to be enough resources for every little thing to survive. There are limiting factors. The limiting factors is that which controls a population size. Say there was a lot of these rabbits and they only lived in this yard. After a while, they would consume all the food source, especially if there was no predator to limit the population of the rabbits. So the limiting factors is that which controls the population size. It can be predators, it can be food source, it can be habitat, environment. These are the different things that the organisms depend on. This particular butterfly garden is full of native plants and animals. It's a native population, many of the same species in the same location. Now what happens when something comes in that doesn't belong there? Like him, invasive species, a predator. We don't have lizards that big in South Florida. Invasive species that could upset the balance, and he's not native. Now when we look at a lot of these different butterflies and different insects here in the garden, we look at the scale of life from the particular organism all the way up to the biosphere. We have the organism itself, which is that particular species. A lot of those, like all of the butterflies you see that are of one type, say the zebra butterflies, make up the population of those butterflies. And then all the different species here become a community. All of these animals are a community. All of that makes up an entire ecosystem, which is part of the biome, which is all of the flora flora here in South Florida. And all of that is part of the biosphere of the earth, which is that part of the earth that has life in it. The carrying capacity here in this yard is the maximum size the population could be sustained. It's based on the plants that these butterflies are dependent on. The birds here, dependent on their food source. The carrying capacity, how much of that particular organism can be sustained here. Now, some of these animals have relationships, symbiotic relationships. If one is living off of another and the other one is damaged, that's parasitism. If they benefit each other, it's mutualism. If one of them affects the other one in only a way good for that but doesn't harm the other one, well then that's commensalism. So these are all terms that we've used within learning about ecology. So now that we've talked about all of these different parts of ecology, let's recap those important vocabulary words, starting with ecology, that branch of biology that deals with relations of organisms to each other in their surroundings. The interdependence, how all of these forms of life are dependent on each other for survival. We have the food chain, we have the plants, which produce the food, the caterpillar eats the plant, the bird comes down, eats the caterpillar, we have a food chain. The food web is how there is some animals, they'll eat many different types of animals, this animal will eat out, but it all makes up the entire way of interdependence within an ecosystem. We have the producers, which are our plants, we have the consumers, which are all of those organisms which are dependent on producers or other organisms for their food. We have the herbivore, like the bunny rabbit, only eats plants. We have the carnivore, like a wolf, only eats other animals. And we have the omnivore, like a duck, that'll eat plants and animals. Man is an omnivore. We have primary, secondary, and tertiary consumers. Primary eats the plants, secondary will eat a primary, and the tertiary will eat that secondary. And this also forms our energy pyramid with the producers on the bottom, and then we go to the primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary at the apex, where we have our apex predators like bears, wolves, lions, tigers. The ecosystem, has both biotic and abiotic factors. 
Abiotic, the air, the earth, the water, the rocks. Biotic, from the word biology, everything that's living, plants and animals. We have our predator, we have our prey. We have different relationships, the so three different ones. The parasitism would be like the fleas on a cat or a dog. The host is damaged and the parasite is the one that gains. Then we have mutualism. We all know about Nemo and his sea anemones. They both gain. It's a mutualistic symbiotic relationship. And then commensalism, where we have one animal that draws benefit from another animal but doesn't hurt them. Sometimes we'll see the birds that float on the back of an alligator. An alligator doesn't care, the bird's getting a free ride. Limiting factors, those factors in an ecosystem of which the organisms are dependent. There has to be enough food, enough water, enough shelter. Those animals have to have certain things within life in order to survive. The native population, like the bird that just went by, those animals that live here, they're supposed to be here. This particular beautiful butterfly garden we've been in today is surrounded by native plants. Invasive species, most of the plants actually that are in the gardens here in South Florida are non-native. But the native are the ones that naturally are here and that's what draws the wildlife because that's what they're used to. We have the carrying capacity, which is the maximum size that a population can be. There is those limiting factors and that creates how much within an ecosystem those animals can be. And we have the organism, which is part of the population of those organisms, which becomes parts of the community, which forms the ecosystem in the biome, in the biosphere. So there we have it. This is our study on ecology. I hope you've enjoyed it as we've enjoyed it here in this beautiful South Florida butterfly garden. So here in this beautiful butterfly habitat, I'm surrounded by butterflies, by native plants, there's caterpillars, there's the cocoons, and this wonderful breeze that we've known to love here in South Florida.